I broke some news today, and I wasn't expecting this to happen, but I did. We're going to talk about it. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. All right, well, today on The Morning Show, I interviewed Chris Ruddy, and Chris Ruddy is the founder of Newsmax, okay? And I've been following Chris Ruddy for 30 years. And when I first started following Chris Ruddy, had him on the radio 30 years ago, he, this was before Newsmax, okay? He was covering a lot of things with the Clintons that no one else was covering. This was 93, 94 in Clinton's first term. And the internet wasn't a thing then, right? So there was no Drudge Report. There was nothing. And he would come on and he would talk about these stories and uh, just incredible investigative reporting. And then years later, he started the Newsmax website, now, of course, the, the TV. And the reason Chris Ruddy came on today is Newsmax is becoming a public company, which is a, it's, it's a pretty big thing, right? They're becoming something major, it's, which is good because we need an alternative to the mainstream cable news that, that's out there. But he shared something with me. I'm going to play you a clip of the interview today. It's a short clip. He shared something with me that was amazing. And what I was talking to him about was Fox News. I said to him, I said, Fox News used to be like you guys are at Newsmax, right? They were new. They weren't number one, right? They, the, you know, CNN and and, and MSNBC were way above them. They were on for a long time, several years. Nobody watched them. They became number one, and they became number one because of conservatives watching them, making them number one. And now here we are. They've sold us all out, right? You know, and I I said to him, I said, so now that Newsmax is ready to explode, obviously, you know, you and everybody that's going to make boatloads of money, it's going to become a big publicly traded company. I said, how can people – Trust Newsmax going forward. How are you going to be able to stay connected with people who are so suspicious after the betrayal of Fox News, right? How are you going to do that? Because, you know, because when you get to that level, a whole big thing happens, right? You be, it's a whole new level. And he told me a couple of things, one of which is they keep their corporate headquarters um, out. Um, they keep their corporate headquarters out of New York or Washington there. Their corporate offices are here in Florida. They're located in Boca Raton, Florida, so they don't have that influence with all those Washington lobbyists and everything on mm-hmm. around them all the time and, and things like this. But then he drops something about Fox News Channel that I had never heard before. And in fact, when he first said it, I was really stunned. I was like, what? What? How, how could this have happened? And uh, I'll share this with you. So this is just a clip of the interview. And uh, you'll hear a little bit of me, and then you'll hear Chris Ruddy, who just dropped pretty big news. Here we go. How do you keep honest reporting where you don't alienate the conservative viewers like Fox has done and still grow? Well, I th- well, I think you stay true to your mission when you're buying into doing deals with the Biden administration. Yeah. Um, I'll give you an example. It came out in one of these voting lawsuits that Fox News was getting the Trump campaign ads ahead of time. Yeah. The press will get those. They have an embargo, but they're supposed to keep it confidential. Fox News was taking those ads, the Trump ads, and giving them to the Biden campaign and giving them advance notice of the ads. Yeah. Now, that's, that's, not, that's journalistically unethical, but it also shows you that they were not trying to help Donald Trump. It's collusion. It's collusion. Yeah, well... It's it's just a bad thing to do. Yeah, it is collusion. So just to spell it out a little bit more, the Trump campaign have a relationship with Fox News people. They get they get the ads early because they need to have the ads early for a couple of reasons. One, they're going to air them on their network, right? So they get them early for that. And also because they have a relationship with the Trump campaign, they get this privilege of getting the ads early. So that they could see them early, mm-hmm. and but the, but they're the, the, every year things are embargoed, embargoed meaning you're not supposed to publicly disclose them. It's like what you know you're supposed to keep sources confidential, off the record comments. Sometimes I'll have things given to me, or people will say things to me that are embargoed till whatever. 
Okay. And what Chris Ruddy said, in the, and I had not heard this reported anywhere. I know everyone and their brother is going to tell me they heard this before. Anybody who tells you they heard this before, they're not. Come on. Have you heard this before? I've never heard this before. Fox News getting the Trump ads early, giving them to the Biden campaign. This is the equivalent of Donna Brazil giving the debate questions from CNN to Hillary's campaign early. And the reason they give the ads to them early is, uh, well, it's a pretty obvious reason. And that is Fox is colluding with the Biden campaign to stop Trump. And I want to, uh, you know, I, I want to say this because when I was talking about this today, the people that are on the air at Fox, because they're the face of it, get the blame for everything, okay? I wouldn't hold people like Jesse Waters or Gutfeld or even Hannity responsible for this because I don't think they'd have anything to do with it. The Murdochs hate Trump. Paul Ryan on the board of directors hates Trump more than anyone I've ever seen. When he was on with Cavuto, he may not lose his cool like Michael Rappaport used to or Kathy Griffin does or something. But you could see in Paul Ryan's face when he was there with Cavuto, he hates Trump like I've never seen hate. It's so it's so bizarre. It's like eating him up and stuff. So leaking the um, Trump commercials in advance of the Biden campaign, they they do that very speci- specifically for a couple of reasons. One, ob- the, the obvious one is they want to help the Biden campaign, but it helps them because it allows the Biden camp to come up with a response to whatever the Trump ads are about. I don't think sooner. that's why they do it. And also they can start working on other counter no, I don't think that's why they do it at all. Why? Because Why would because they do it then? It's a quid pro quo. They're getting something in return. From Th- Biden? There's what nothing, are they getting? I don't know. There's nothing benefiting Biden that I've seen from him getting these videos early. He hasn't come out with any counter things. Maybe <sighs> he, comes, he has a response ready to go. It's usually lame and nobody cares. So I think part of what you're saying is true. They're obviously warning them and giving them the heads up. But I think there's a, they're getting something else in return. They wouldn't d- do that for nothing. They're, it's, they're getting well, something in return. Yeah, we don't know what it is. You're probably right. You know what I wonder, It's Kathy? a quid pro quo. Maybe they're giving them money. What, what Maybe else? they're giving them access to things. Who knows? Maybe they're giving them um, intel on Trump. I don't know. There's, it's a quid pro well, quo. This is, this is really scary. First of all, uh, you're, you're, like I think you said, you're, you're, it's you're right. Collusion. I think collusion. you're probably right. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're probably right. It's yeah. it's the uniparty. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and and this is Fox News They're management sharing information. Now, this this information, when what Chris Reddy said is, it was part of the evidence in one of these court cases. So it is. This is like in court records. So this is this is true. And uh, I was I was shocked when he told me this today. Th- this is something that people got to be held accountable for. And I, and I don't, I know a lot of people is like, well, I don't like Hannity. This is beyond them. This is, this is people in management at yeah. Fox News. And I wonder what else are they doing exactly. like this that we don't know about? Probably lots of things. Think, yeah. They're probably, they, I mean, you just don't know. I mean, Hannity, I don't trust anybody in the media. Hannity could be relaying private conversations he has with Trump to people at Fox that are relaying it to Biden, or he could be relaying. He, I, don't, I don't think he's relaying it directly to the White House, but he, I'm sure he knows if he tells this person and that person that they're going to go tell somebody in the White in in, Ob- in Biden's camp. I mean, that's it, 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 this is all how these things work. You scratch your back, I'll scratch mine. They give information. They do it to get information. Okay. That's why they give it to yeah. them. So they give them stuff. Well, that's how it's always you know, been. This whole thing, you know, re- there's no two sides. This, They're all working together to screw us. This this thing about red pilling, I you know, I, I think most everybody knows that comes from the Matrix, right? That's what Morpheus, you could take the red, you know. The red. Yeah. And there was remember there was that one guy who uh, went to the went to the Matrix and he wanted to go back in the Matrix and he says, "I'm so sorry, I took that red pill. Yeah. I, want, I just want to go back and have a decent life. I don't have to be rich or anything else. Right. I just want to, you know, when when you see the level that the government and the and the fake news media and the corporate media are at, 
to try to go around the will of the American people because Trump is so popular and with what things like this, is, it's, it's, just, it's sick. What happens is when you start doing these things, and I believe this has been going on probably <laughs> – well, a lot of it's been going on since the country even formed. This kind of stuff. Yeah, was but we're happening. at a new level now because they've lost control. It's a different level. They've lost control. And once you go down a certain rabbit hole, whatever rabbit hole you choose, there's no getting out of it. You know what I mean? Like if you if you if you own a news organization and you start trading information with others, that's it. Once you've done it, that there's no going back. You know what I mean? You can't call them up and say, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, there's so much corruption and it just the world is corrupt. I mean, yeah. that's just the way it is. I mean, it, that's a given. So when you look at news mm-hmm. and when you read things, you have to understand there's always a bias and there's always, um, an agenda from everybody on all sides. You have to find certain reporters. You like, like Miranda Devine. I love her. She's great. She's honest. Yeah. She's with the New York post. You find certain people that you really respect and trust. Byron Don, uh, not Byron, Byron York, uh, Jonathan Turley. These are people yeah. he writes for the New York Post. Greg too. Kelly, Greg Kelly, Rob Sch- uh, Schneider, Schmidt, Schmidt. Sorry, Rob yeah. Schneider. He's he's good too. He's a MAGA guy too. Rob yeah, Schneider. Not the Dukes of Hazard. Yes, we trust the Dukes of Hazard. No, too. the guy, the comedian. Oh, the comedian. Rob Sch- Sch- yes, yeah, he's yes, a big Trump yeah. guy. So we're all confused here. So Rob Schmidt, you find people you trust, us, for example. Yes. And that's who Especially you us. who you can listen to and take it to the bank. And then other people, uh, like Harris Faulkner, I don't even know what she's all about. Hannity, Laura Ingram, I don't trust her at all, or Hannity. I think they'll sell out their own kids for money. I really the two of them. I, I think they just play both sides. And uh, they're in their lifestyle. Brett Bear, you know, they're they're all in for the almighty oh, yeah. dollar. You can't but, trust but any of this. But this is people. this is at um, this this is at a level that just really surprised me. A level of betrayal that's so petty because you know it doesn't surprise the, me the, at all. The the ads, the ads themselves aren't the point because eventually you're going to see them anyway. It's it's that they're so casually working with the Biden campaign, right? Um, now, Corrine Jean-Pierre, what she pulled today in the White House press briefing was unreal. I'm going to get to this, but I just want to make a, middle, a little mental note. Uh, I figured something out about Ben Shapiro today. So if I forget to bring up Ben Shapiro, Kathy, remind me later in the okay. show. I don't want to get into it right now. I want to talk about it later in the show. But if I don't mention Ben Shapiro, remind me, okay? Because okay. I just figured out something about Ben Shapiro, I think, and I want to run it by you all in the audience, and you can let me know what you think about it. Okay. Uh, It's pretty important. Okay, so when Biden, Biden's just had probably the worst political week of any president's life, right? Mm -hmm. He started off in Normandy. Mm -hmm. He's on stage at the Normandy celebration with the president of France, and he had an accident and went number two in his pants. Then, oh then his son got convicted of federal gun felonies, right, in court. Then he goes off to the G7, and he wanders off from the world leaders and st- starts talking to an empty field, thinking he's talking to people. Then he comes back to America. He goes to this fundraiser in Hollywood with Jimmy Kimmel. Jack Black and Obama, and he froze on stage, forgot where he was, and Obama had to walk him off the say. I mean, it was just a the word. There has never been a president or presidential candidate that's had a week this bad. Yeah, the Nixon Kennedy debate. Kennedy uh, Nixon was like Trump compared to Biden. I mean, they, they, those things I just shared with you all happened in the last week with Biden. So that, that thing with with Obama leading yeah. him off was just very bad Scary. and very freaky telling. And it really made, solidified what a lot of people think that Obama's really running the country. Well, I think Obama... It, it, enjo- it was so, like, visually... O- o- Obama enjoyed walking Biden backstage because he wants people to know he's in charge. It was, it was kind of like him letting everybody know, don't worry, I'm in charge. I agree with you. I think yeah. it was intentional, and I think it was 
definitely that's what I thought. It was it was an aggressive move. He could have given Biden a couple seconds more to, before he did that. Yeah, no, I mean it was definitely. I think he did it intentionally he, to humiliate him. He, you know, it was that big fundraiser, and he wanted everyone. Yeah, he to wanted know, everybody to know I'm, I'm the, the one in charge. It right. was like Alexander Haig on the day Reagan got shot. Don't yeah. worry, I'm in charge here. Yeah. That's what he was doing. And, I agree and, with you on that. And it was a message because a lot of people are worried that Biden, so don't worry, I'm Obama, I'm here, I'm in command. But Jean-Pierre yes, today- that, that's exactly right. Yeah, Jean-Pierre yeah, today- don't worry. Uh, in the press conference was asked by a reporter about Biden talking to nobody at the G7, talking to the empty field and you know when the Italian prime minister had to go and bring him back. And her response, her, oh, her her choice was to lie. Of and course, as that's a, her go-to. And make up a fantastical story. And uh, let's play. So this is today, White House press briefing. This just happened a, a few minutes ago. Uh, secondly, there, there seems to be a, a sort of rash of videos that have been edited to make the president appear especially frail or mentally confused. Um, I, I won't- Those aren't videos edited to make him look frail or confused. He is. Right, exactly. I'm wondering if the, the White House is especially worried about the fact that this, this appears to be a, a, a pattern that we're seeing more from. Yeah, we, and I think you all have called this the cheap fakes video, and that's exactly what they are. They are cheap fakes video. Uh, they- cheap fakes? I don't, is that the, is, is that different from deep fake? Well, first she of all, speak? that's, that's a she- setup. Cheap fake. That's a setup question. Yeah. She she had him ask her that. Yeah. So she could so she could lead into this. She's not. I don't, that I don't quick. know what it. I think she meant to say deep fake. She forgot her but line. But she she's stupid. She's a cheap and fake. And she she's been thinking. You know how you think something is called something your whole life, and then you yeah. realize, oh, it's called something else. Yeah. I think she's always thought it was called cheap fake. Yeah. It's deep fake. Yeah. She's yeah. just an idiot. Yeah. Well, well that's true. They're done in bad faith, uh, and uh, and some of your news organization uh, have uh, have been very clear, have stressed that she, she means organizations. She's just having a, all kinds of problems. Well, she's you know these right wing uh, right wing critics of the president have a credibility problem uh, because of the fact checkers have repeatedly caught them pushing what misinformation, disinformation, uh, and so we. Okay, now what what she's talking about with her cheap fakes? Okay. She's talking about people that have made memes out of it. When you watch the raw footage of him out there that we all saw, he yeah. walks away from the other world leaders. Right. He's out in an, uh, in an empty field facing no one, and he's having a conversation with air. So Peter. she's saying it's taken out of context. That There's no context. You have that. to see the whole video to understand why he's turning around and shaking hands with a ghost. That's a common thing with leftists when you bring things up. Like this clip I played of of uh, Chris Ruddy, you know, they'll say, well, that's just a clip. You've got to play the entire interview and then you'll have context. No, there's no context. We've we've but seen But they it. won't give Trump the same courtesy. Yeah. This is something coming from from your your part of the world, calling them cheap fakes and misinformation. Cheap fakes again. It's deep fakes. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah, really uh, and uh, I'll quote The Washington Post where they wrote uh, they wrote about this and a liberal paper. How Republican used misleading videos to attack Biden in a 24 hour period. And to their credit, we have a conservative Washington examiner uh, did call them out as well, calling out the New York Post. Uh, ironically, several several recent cheap fakes actually attacked the president for thanking troops. For thanking troops, that is what they're attacking the president for. Both in Normandy, this happened, and again in Italy. Okay, in Normandy is when he went number two in his pants. So this must be a new term they've made up, cheap fakes. I, I just Googled never it. I have heard never of heard of this. Never so, heard of it. So, I, I, you know, I'm going to call it out if we're mistaken. It is a term I have never heard. And it means when you manipulate, well, let, me, let me read, the, read the term. And this okay. must be something new. The White House, now, I'm guessing, has come up with. You you just Googled it. I just so Googled it. I have never heard of cheap fake before, but this is what it says. A cheap fake is altered media yeah. that has been changed through conventional and affordable technology. Social media examples of cheap fake techniques include Photoshopping, including face swapping, lookalikes, as well as speeding and slowing video. Um... I have never have you guys heard, heard of that term before, and you're in the media. I have never. This must be some new made a cheap up term. fake. I've heard of deep fake. I've heard of cheap trick, cheap date, cheap skate. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of cheap fake. No, never. Um, but you know, it may, you know what? It it may not be Kathy. 
a new term, but the liberals are so familiar with it because they use this probably. I guess so. So it's part of their technique, you know? Listen, we all saw Biden on stage in Normandy. We saw Biden uh, at the G7, and we saw him in Hollywood. He's out of it. Brandi Devine, I read her article in the New York Post. She said to be careful about underestimating Biden. She said because people will, she she almost feels like, I don't want to say done on purpose, but she said he has this miraculous ability when he's debating or doing interviews sometimes, like all of a sudden he seems lucid and fine. But people have lowered their expectations so much that they'll say, see how great he is? So she said, be careful of that with the debate. Don't underestimate him yeah. or his people. And there's so many rules on this debate coming up. They're going to have a mute button. And I know they said that Biden's going to go to Camp David to prepare. So he's going to have like a week of, of, of basically rehearsal is what it is, rehearsing for this. Yeah, and get the dosage right for whatever they put right. up and with. Right, and what they're going to do is just really try to throw Trump off and really, he's going to refer to him as a convicted felon over and over and over again. And he's going to uh, talk about January 6th, those two things, that's worth over and over again. He's going to try to throw Trump off the issues, no matter how he's going to just keep trying to throw him off the issues. Because he does not want Trump to talk about the economy, inflation, or the fact that McDonald's is three times the cost and all this stuff. He doesn't want him to talk about that or the crime or anything. He's just going to want to talk about you're a convicted felon. You should not be president. You're a convicted felon over and over and over again. And CNN's got a mute button feature. See, I, I'm glad Trump agreed to the debate, but I feel like he's, in a way, opened it up for them to just really have complete control and I don't know if that's such a good thing. I don't know if that was a good but move on his I, part. I think I mean, that, a mute no. button, the that's, reason that's the, like a dream come true for these people. Trump and Biden are doing the debate for the same reason. OK, the exact same reason. It locks Biden in as the nominee. This, there's it, there to my knowledge. Now, somebody may pull something out. Well, back in 1870s, you know. I, I never remember having a presidential debate with the two nominees prior to the convention, because neither of them are officially the nominees yet. We haven't right. had the conventions yet. Yeah, that's true. They have the debates after the conventions. And Biden wanted the debate to, to kind of take ownership of the nomination. That's why they're doing it early. This is, and, and, I, and I think Trump, in large part, was the same thing, because we want, we want it to be Biden. We don't want them to plug somebody else in. Right. Not that they would win either. Um, I read this whole article about, I read it to you, I can't remember, it's Wall Street Journal or something. The liberal fantasy, and, and they don't say fantasy, they'll say their theory. They call it a theory, but yeah. it's really a fantasy. Their theory is that Biden steps their wish, and, and this is what a lot of people are saying out of Washington. This was in like a Wall Street Journal, one of those publications, New York Times. I'm reading, trying to read more stuff here. And it said that um, their theory or fantasy is that Biden withdraws before the convention and that they put in some younger, hipper, much more energetic, they won't say who, person at the convention in August. And that momentum brings it home because yeah. they know Biden is not, cannot win. Mm -hmm. um, but they said the problem is they have to get Biden to step down, which I have said to you is never, ever going to happen. They said he's very stubborn. Of course he is. And he's a nasty old coot. There is no way him and his wife are going to step down from this job. And then they said what you've talked about. The other mm -hmm. problem they have is if he does step down, how do they handle Kamala? They have to get her to step down, too. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Because she cannot win. She's a it's disaster. Not happen. So this whole article went through all these different scenarios. It is never going to happen. OK, this man lives on another planet. He thinks he's great. He thinks that he is doing a fantastic job. You tell him there's inflation, he'll tell you there's no inflation. There's no crime. This stuff doesn't exist. He lives in his own mind. Yeah. Well, you know, the debate's next the week. Fantasy world. And I agree with Miranda Devine that he does come off better in the debates. And it's not just because- Yeah, don't underestimate um, him, she said. It's not just because people have higher expectations. Biden, Biden, he's checked out. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But sometimes he plays it up to- as as a 
as protection. That's what she said. And and I think what what it sound, I, I have not read this thing with Miranda Devine you're talking about, but it sounds like what Miranda Devine's suggesting. I'll send you the is, article. Is that Biden is looking so feeble and out of it almost on purpose to lower the expectations of the public and also yes. to to have Trump not so prepared. That, that's, that's exactly yeah. what, she, and I put it in your Facebook group and I'll send you the article. That's exactly what she was saying that he almost, she thinks he almost does it on purpose before a big event to lower everybody's expectations so he can come out. And that me, might be, let me give an example of hold when on, that's that been might done. be a manipulation he's done his whole life it's, with other, with everybody. It's kind of like when Michael J. Fox testified in front of Congress about MS and he didn't take his medication because he wanted to be symptomatic to be more, you know what I mean? So there's a, there's a history of liberals using conditions to manipulate the public. And I think, I think you're right. I think Marina Devine's right. Um, I want to tell you guys about Mike Lindell and my pillow. Uh, Mike Lindell, of course, was with Trump at Turning Point. He got a shout out from, from President Trump. And of course, Mike Lindell, one of our biggest supporters here on, on this program the $25 extravaganza continues with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. And I wanted to go through some of these, Kathy, because there's some really good deals here. Uh, the $25 extravaganza, this is with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. Uh, one of the uh, – there's a whole page if you go to uh, MyPillow.com where you can see the $25 specials. But one of them is the, the Giza – uh, elegance pillow. Both the queen and the king size are both just twenty five bucks, and you know that's a big discount. The king is usually seventy nine ninety eight, and the queen is usually sixty nine ninety eight. And we have these pillows, and the the Giza elegance pillows are an upscale version of the my pillow. They have the same patented fill inside, but the cover on the outside is of that one hundred percent Giza cotton, which is is it's almost like almost like silk, Kathy, wouldn't you say? And these are the ones that uh, when, when you've been in the hospital, we take the Giza Elegance pillows to the hospital. Oh, you can't yeah. sleep in the hospital without them. And we usually leave them behind because we don't want to bring a pillow home that's been in the hospital. We just buy a new one with our promo code Kane. But these are just $25, and it, that is a massive discount. But uh, there's huge discounts on other top MyPillow products, including the towels, the MyPillow 2.0s. It goes on and on. So go to MyPillow.com. And use our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, for huge savings. And remember, when you do that, uh, not only are you supporting Mike Lindell and my pillow, you're supporting this program. Oh, yeah, free shipping on all orders site-wide over $75 with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. We'll take a quick break and be right back after this. Imagine a place where summer never ends. That's Coconut Soda and Juice Shop, your beachside oasis in Florida. Coconuts specialize in crafting delicious smoothies, refreshing juices, and more. That's the dream of Bree, a mom and passionate entrepreneur who has a love for food service and hospitality. Coconuts is all about fresh, tasty, and healthy snacks that embody the spirit of summer. From tropical smoothies and wellness shots to healthy snacks, the menu is designed to provide a nutritious and refreshing experience for beachgoers and health enthusiasts alike. But to make Bree's dream a reality, she needs your support. Go right now to kickstarter.com and search coconuts. That's kickstarter.com and search coconuts and join in in making this beachside haven the go-to spot for quality and service. Any amount is appreciated. That's coconuts on kickstarter.com. Looking to make a six-figure income with little to no prior experience? Want to be your own boss? You can have this too-good-to-be-true career as an auto broker in the automotive industry. Auto brokers are self-employed individuals who work as intermediaries between car dealerships and buyers. But I don't know anything about being an auto broker. That's where Go Auto Broker comes in. In our online and print course, How to Become an Auto Broker, you'll learn how to secure leads, the 10 steps to the sale, and all the ins and outs of being an auto broker. An investment in our course is an investment in yourself and your future. Begin your journey and sign up now. Visit www.goautobroker.com. 
Have you ever heard that laughter is the best medicine? You'll find out how true that is with your weekly Therapy podcast, available on all podcast platforms. Host Tell and Anne Marie, your not so typical therapist and nurse practitioner duo, have a flair for ADHD and life's hilarities. They'll make you laugh, cry, and maybe even rethink some of your life choices. And that's just in one episode. And no topic is off limits. Tell and Anne Marie discuss everything from gaslighting, daily life with ADHD. ADHD, and relationships. Add your weekly therapy podcast to your podcast playlist, available on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and wherever you listen to podcasts. And you can catch the video podcast on YouTube. Don't just cope, laugh, learn, and sip some therapy. It's therapy with a twist. Share the podcast on all your social media so your friends can tune in too. Your weekly therapy podcast. Start listening right now. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Brian, I just want to give a shout out to my coffee. This is very important. Anybody that has any kind of acid reflux, if you try the low acidic coffee of my coffee, it is absolutely the best. I wasn't able to drink coffee for years, and I tried it, and now I can drink the coffee with no problem whatsoever. It's absolutely delicious. The flavor is is like a tastier flavor than regular coffee. I'm telling you, I don't get stomach aches. I don't get anything. I'm so happy with it, and I think that you ought to mention it. I think it's important, especially for older people. Mike Lindell says that his coffee, the My Coffee, which is 50% off with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, at MyPillow.com, is the best tasting coffee you've ever had. Absolutely true. I have tried over the years other coffees, and nothing comes near his, and that really is the truth. 50% off with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, at MyPillow.com. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in. So Biden released a new ad, and this fits into what we were talking about in the last segment, what Biden's plans are for the debate. Mm-hmm. Here's, here's the, the latest Biden ad, not mm-hmm. leaked out early like Fox is doing with the Trump ads. Listen. In the courtroom, we see Donald Trump for who he is. He's been convicted of 34 felonies, found liable for sexual assault, and he committed financial fraud. Meanwhile, Joe Biden's been working, lowering health care costs and making big corporations pay their fair share. This election is between a convicted criminal who's only out for himself and a president who's fighting for your family. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Okay. You know, the the problem with that ad is that outside of the inner circle of the Democrats, no one trusts these verdicts. Now, this one thing here, liable for sexual assault, I've never even heard of liable for sexual assault before. Now, this is some new thing. No one the outside of the, the, the hardcore mm-hmm. Biden circle except those 34 verdicts uh, of, of guilt. And, and, you know, it's been almost two weeks. Well, they're going to harp on that. They're not going to focus on the issues because they're just going to harp on that over and well, over again. Well, it's, it's been almost two weeks since we heard that story of the possible jury misconduct. That story has disappeared. I haven't heard any updates on that. Um, but the, the problem Joe has, if Biden, if Biden was doing well, mm-hmm. if things were going well in the country, that strategy would work. But Trump's response... Um, well, he'll, he'll have to correct, you know, talk about the corruption and all that with the legal system. And, but, but what his response will mostly be, uh, uh, will involve how bad things are in this country right now Mm -hmm. for everyone under, under Biden. And he'll point out gas prices, grocery prices, and go on and on and on. And that's, that's what people care about. And I, I don't think there's enough people that trust the, um, the jury verdict. Now I wanted to play this clip. This is Jill Biden on CNN. The, the Biden, you know, we just had Father's Day. G- and we were ta- I was talking to you guys last week that Jill Biden's the worst father in America. 
and uh, followed up by the worst mother in America, and that's Jill Biden. This is Jill Biden. She's asked about uh, Hunter's sentencing and uh, pardons from Joe. Your husband, the president, has said he wouldn't pardon your son. He wouldn't commute his sentence. That's correct. As a mother, though, you must want to see this burden lifted off your son. Do you you wish you could do that? Well, Joe and I both respect the judicial system, and that's the bottom line. Okay. They respect the judicial system. Now, first off, don't respect their son. Hunter is her stepson. So she doesn't have the same connection as she has for the daughter who's um, uh, her natural daughter. Okay, Um, this is the the reason I say these are the worst parents in America. They've allowed their son, Hunter, to be convicted of federal crimes. He's going to be disbarred as an attorney. Okay, Uh, just so that he can have a political zinger at the CNN debate. Yep. Now, I don't buy this thing that he's not going to pardon or commute him. Uh, he'll do it. He'll probably do it at the end. He's certainly not going to do it before the election. He'll do it at the end. OK. And and you know what? He he should. I mean, let's be honest. Come on. You know, I'm a father. If if I, if if my son had committed nonviolent felonies, OK, I'm a nonviolent, I'd pardon him, too, probably. And I think most parents would, whether it's right or wrong. Most parents would do for nonviolent. They're not going to admit that before but, the election. But for them to parade around uh, this this crime family, this mob boss and his mob wife, Joe and Jill, running around like they respect the law. Are you kidding me? You know, they won't even have peace talks with with Putin to try to end this war in, in Ukraine. Now, all of a sudden, they respect the law because they want to say we, we're not going to challenge it. We respect the courts. Unlike Trump who has no trust in the legal system. You know, these people are in a bubble. They've lost complete touch with the pulse of the American people, and they've also lost complete touch with, with reality. And, you know, the, the left as a whole have no idea where the people's minds are in this country on, on anything. You know, it's like this this thing with Schumer that seems such a minor thing, but it's so typical with him um, with the burgers. barbecuing. And and I'm, I'm sure you guys have seen the picture. He did delete it, um, or, <laughs> but he, he wanted to show that he's down. So uh, they got a grill. Incredible. And he's grilling hamburgers, and he puts a, a slice of cheese on a raw patty. This is on a the man. Grill. On a raw patty. He's close to 80 years old. Yeah. He has never grilled a burger in his life. Or cooked one in the kitchen. I in mean, a that pan. to me was. Come on. I, 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 Don Jr. <laughs> took that picture. I had a lot of fun with that one. I promise you Donald Trump knows how to grill a burger. I've seen him that do it. That is incredible. Remember when me. he went to the fraternity? He was grilling yeah, burgers I mean, at, at the fraternity What house. kind of a man does not know how to grill? I know how to grill a burger. Yeah. I mean, it's not even a manly thing. A, a human. <laughs> What kind of a person has never grilled a burger? I it's know. In this country. It's I, incredible to me. I, I That's will like say, our all-American food. I have never it's incredible. known a man who did not know how to uh, melt cheese on a patty and cook a burger on the grill. Nobody. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's, well, Kathy. Whose idea was it to put the cheese on the raw patty? Okay, somebody said, let's put cheese on that. Find out who we fired. Before we, (laughs) before, it was probably his idea. Yeah. Everybody knows you don't put the cheese on until the burger's pretty much done cooking. And then you put the cheese on and you close the lid for like 10 seconds. It's nice and melted. That's just crazy. I've never, I've never seen something like this. No, but I've never seen anybody. Yeah. That's a man who's never picked up a kitchen utensil in his life. He's never prepared a bite that's gone into his own mouth because he's an elitist. Right? Yeah, obviously. He's, he's an elitist. I mean, that's one of the most basic things. I don't think, and, and it's not even about the grill. It's just about cooking the burger. You can cook a burger in a fry pan, okay? And I promise you, he's never done that either. Because yeah. Of, because if he's cooked a burger in a fry pan, he would know you don't put the cheese on raw meat. No, he has no idea. I mean. He has no idea. No. <laughs> I mean. I have a funny story about my dad. I'm not going to tell it. It's pretty funny about cooking. I've told Brian, but I won't embarrass my father, but it's pretty funny. But my dad knows how to grill. And 
we we went to his house a couple years ago and he made steaks and they were the best steaks I've ever had in my life. I told my dad, these are the best steaks. My dad's always known how to grill food. Okay. <laughs> That's like a basic thing with a man that they know how to do. I mean, but like I said, women know how to grill too, but it's not even about the grill. Everybody who's cooked a burger, which I would think would be everybody who's an adult in this country. I mean, the hamburger is like our, our American thing. That's, that's, you know, it's, you know, and at his age, just incredible because we don't have any background on the, on the whole fake barbecue thing, but the idea that he was in front of that grill cooking anything. Yeah, exactly. They, it's just so fake and they, strange. Somebody, there was hot dogs and hamburgers. The, the hot dogs looked like they were done perfectly. And somebody, they plugged him in to take the picture so he could look like a man of the people. <laughs> and, and he looked like a clown. <laughs> and if he didn't have that cheese, it might have just, well, it might have worked. You know, the cheese set was the problem. I know this sounds petty, but remember the big deal they made when Trump asked for a second scoop of ice cream? It was the end of the world. It yeah. was like a, who does he think? I know. You know, the, <laughs> the thing about the cheese on the raw patty on the grill, it doesn't just show that this 80-year-old man has never prepared a bite of food that, that he has eaten in his life. Never. Even as a kid, he didn't it, learn how to cook a burger. It shows, it's weird. It shows how elitist he is. Yeah. Where, how can a guy like that doesn't know that – it know, shows, know what know what the American people are feeling and suffering through right now with the economy. It shows me that I don't know anything about his life, but this is a man who has, oh. like you said, has never done anything for himself. Never. He's always had people do things for him. Yeah, his servants. Like it, like it's beneath him to even cook a hamburger or cook anything. I mean, I, it's just that picture was just hilarious. So, so Bi- uh, Biden had his ridiculous ad. Trump has a new ad out about Biden. So let me play. Uh, this is this is the Biden ad. Let me play the Biden ad about Joe Biden. This is a good one. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by go. You know the you know the thing. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was in foot him. Uh, foot, Excuse me, foothills of the Himalayas with Xi Jinping. See no loss, see no so long as I see you, but my our freedom can never be secure. We'll never forget lying around. And him, I mean, it, it, that's him him lying around, actually. It is noteworthy that the percentage of women who register to vote and cast a ballot is consistently higher than the percentage of the men who do so. End of quote. Repeat the line. <laughs> I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize true international over depression. Okay, yeah, that's I, my my favorite one of those is end of quote, repeat the line. That's my favorite. <laughs> or he, he reads one that says pause. Yeah, he's reading inside the parentheses, you know. Oh, my goodness. That's a good ad. What they're going to do at Camp David is he'll get a nice long rest. See, he's been... They've been they've been dragging him around the world, and he, he's his his mind just can't keep up. This is too much. He's not getting the rest he needs, so his brain is like really malfunctioning. So they'll have him rest up for the next week, and yeah. at Camp David, and pump him full of B vitamins and what else, <laughs> and and get him ready to go. I and think then, more than that, then they'll set, have him do the debate, and you know what I mean. But he'll have to do a nice long rest yeah. beforehand to be to get ready for it. Now, I want to thank our Patreon supporters for their support of the program. And if you would like to support the program, a way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. There's a link to our Patreon page in the description of this and every episode of the program. And uh, of course, all Patreon supporters have access to commercial free editions of all of our podcast episodes. Uh, but there's also other perks and benefits uh, for Patreon supporters, and you get access to a lot of exclusive posts and information that Kathy and I post nowhere else. Uh, and our top Patreon supporters, all of our top Patreon supporters get a live, on-air thank you shout-out on each and every podcast episode. So the names you will hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick. Nick, Wesley, Macho, Mike P, Carlos, Paulette, John, Heather, David, Maria in Texas, Richard, Alice, K Mac, Lee Zepp, Shauna, 
Constance, George, Brandon, Rob, and Trish Wilkerson, and Christy R. These are our top Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for your support. And again, if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the description of this and every single one of our episodes. Um, later, I'll talk in the last segment. I'll talk about this thing with Ben Shapiro at the end uh, when it just I just a thought came in my mind about Ben Shapiro, and I want to run this by you guys, and then you can let me know in the comments whether you agree or disagree with it. And we got a bunch more to cover too in the last segment. Don't go anywhere. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We're going to take a quick break and be right back after this. Do you want to live a healthier, longer life while saving on your health expenses? You'll learn how to do all that and more with the book from author Dr. Whistler St. Ville. Exercise, the best health insurance available on Amazon with health insurance premiums going through the roof. This must read book will show you a natural and affordable alternative, regular exercise. The author is a renowned physician and sports medicine expert. He shares how you can reduce health costs and boost your well-being through simple, effective exercise. Exercise. Exercise, the best health insurance, is filled with practical fitness strategies and highlights the incredible benefits of exercise. It also breaks down the complexities of the U.S. health insurance system. Empower yourself with the knowledge to prioritize self care and learn how to navigate health care with confidence. This book is perfect for all ages and fitness levels. It'll become your roadmap to better health and financial security. Don't wait. Start transforming your life today and order your copy of Exercise, the best health health insurance from author Dr. Whistler St. Ville. Available on Amazon. Take control of your health and your future now. Have you been searching for a way to heal your mind from past trauma and relieve anxiety? Discover the healing power of art with the book from author Nicholas L. Hutchinson, Coloring for the Self-Healer. Heal through trauma with mindfulness coloring. Available on Amazon. This unique coloring book is designed to help individuals of all ages find peace and emotional balance through the simple act of coloring. You'll be immersed in pages that are filled with soothing patterns and positive affirmations that will guide you into the present moment. Created with the expert input of child psychologists specializing in trauma recovery, Coloring for the Self-Healer offers a safe and effective way to manage anxiety and promote healing. Whether you're a young survivor or an adult seeking tranquility, Coloring for the Self-Healer provides a gentle path to recovery. Engage your mind, relax your brain, and color your way to calmness. Each page will help you be present, allowing healing to happen naturally and mindfully. Order your copy right now on Amazon. Coloring for the self Healer, heal through trauma with mindfulness coloring from author Nicholas L. Hutchinson and begin your path to recovery and find peace. Coloring for the Self Healer on Amazon. How would you like to take a wonderful, relaxing shower with handmade rose soaps? Then visit Lion C on Etsy. That's L-I-O-N-S-S-E. The rose soaps at Lion C on Etsy are made with removable petals. They're designed to give you a posh and indulgent shower experience. You use just one petal for each shower with about 25 petals per flower and 100 petals in a box. Each box has you set for three months of luxurious showers. The petals dissolve in water, creating a deep, rich lather that fills your shower with the indulgent fragrance of a rose. These petals are crafted with care, combining the finest ingredients and shaping them into a beautiful, larger rose. Lion Sea crafts vivid rose soaps. They use premium soap base, organic beeswax, and organic rose essential oil. Simple yet sophisticated, Lion Sea soaps offer a delightful, refreshing experience, one petal at a time. Visit the shop right now on Etsy at lionsea.etsy.com. That's L I O. O-N-S-S-E. Lionc.etsy.com. Transform your shower into a luxurious ritual. Lionc.etsy.com. This is Lori Kane, and I want to ask you a question. How important is a good night's sleep, and when was the last time you got one? I get one each and every night with the MyPillow mattress stopper. They're 50% off now with the promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, at checkout at MyPillow.com. Pair it with new pillows and those fabulous Giza Dream Sheets. There's huge discounts on those, too. Free shipping on all orders over $75 with the promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, at MyPillow.com. You'll thank me in the morning. 
You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian. Always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Okay, now before we get back to the new news stuff, I had mentioned last week that I ordered this book that Candace Owens recommended on her new podcast. I want to say a couple things about Candace Owens, okay? She started her new podcast last week, and um, I listened to the first two episodes. The first episode was all about her conflicts. The second episode was pretty good. She recommended this book, and I was telling you, oh, her podcast is really it's good. She listen to it. And then, I, then I listened to the third episode. It was all about her again. It, mm-hmm. Three quarters of Candace Owens' podcast is either about her or what other people are saying about her. And she's getting to a point where she really says nothing of interest or controversy because she's too busy talking about what other people are saying about her. Yeah. And um, there's – I I know I'm talking about her too right now, but there's not much to say about her other than she's just a complete self-centered narcissist. It's so bizarre uh, what happened, but she recommended this book, and I had heard of this book and never uh, thought to get it, and, and uh, she would recommended it, and I went online, and a lot, of, a lot of conservatives have recommended this book, and I got, it's called Chaos, Charles Manson, the CIA, and the Secret History of the 60s, and this book is – Fascinating. Every every review you will find about this online, people will tell you they can't put this book down. Okay, it's that good. You want to read the whole thing? Um, it is that good. But I did put the book down, and I want to tell you why. I, let me tell you what it's about first. Um, a lot of it's about in the beginning is about the Manson killings. Okay, you know the Manson murders. And I did learn some things about that that I did not know because the Manson era was a little bit before my time, and I never really understood when we were teenagers this fascination with Charles Manson. He just a vicious – you know, in the 80s and in the 90s, 70s too, it, it kind of started you – know, there was this fascination in this country with serial killers and just vicious sickos, right? I never really got into that. Um Steve Kane was into the serial killers and did a lot of stuff, but you know, but you know, Bundy and all that stuff. There was this whole thing of fat, and, and I remember when uh, Geraldo went to prison and interviewed Manson. You remember that? And I remember that interview being on television. And I'm like, who cares what this guy thinks? He is the most insane person I've ever seen. It was bizarre. So, but anyway, I got the book, and what the book is about it it's it's not so much about Manson. Although it it, it has a, it, it takes place around it, it's about this MK Ultra program that the government, the CIA, had. And what had happened was, if you've ever seen Manchurian Candidate, the movie, it, it is true that a lot of the prisoners of war that came back that were captured by the North Koreans were completely brainwashed. They would come here, they'd get them back. And the Chinese had done a number on them, just like those guys in the movie with Frank Sinatra, and they were communist Chinese lovers. It was very strange. And the, and the, the U.S. government thought that the, the, the Chinese had perfected brainwashing, and they were terrified about this. And they thought, well, if they've, perf- I mean, the, if they've perfected brainwashing to this level, can they brainwash a president? Can they brainwash Congress? Can they brainwash people here and do all kinds of damage? Well, here we are, you know, over half a century later, 60 years later, 70 years later in China through TikTok is doing all these things they fear. But what this what this program was about is about a lot of things. But what it was, it was about a lot of LSD experiments that the Mm -hmm. CIA was doing in the United States and Canada. And they were trying to find out the uh, effects of LSD on people and how people could be brainwashed and conditioned to do things and all this stuff. Okay. Um, uh, And, and, and a lot of people think that Charles Manson was LSD brainwashed and by the CIA and all this stuff. I don't buy that. I think he was a completely crazy person and did the things he did. Not that he wasn't on LSD, but anyway, this book, I'm in the first, this book 
it fits into a category of only a couple of books I've ever read in my life. I can't wait to, to read the next page. It's that good. But I stopped reading it. I'm still in the first chapter because it's so evil. <laughs> I, yeah, feel like I'm, I feel like I'm reading like a devil, devil Bible here. You know what I mean? I don't need to know um, the, the, all the details about Manson, the Manson family and what they did. And I'm, and the, like, like one of the things that the CIA did that's in this book is they were working in brothels and with prostitutes and the, and when the prostitutes would pick up a John, the CIA, uh, they would give the John, you know, cause they, you know, they, they, a lot of these guys are drunk or the, the women have access to them. They, they, they would give them LSD. And the, the prostitute would take these Johns and they're into their room, wherever they were, their brothel, they'd be on LSD. And the CIA had, had doctors that were watching them through one way glass in another room to see how they react. It's very bizarre stuff. I really don't need to know about that stuff. I think it's too, too, I don't need to know how they make uh, lunch meat. I don't need, you know what I mean? You know that thing about sausage? Yeah. The same, the same thing with lunch meat. Okay. Yeah. I don't need. I don't want to know how they make lunch meat. I don't want to know how they make the sausage, and it's just a little bit too much. So, as fascinating as this is, I don't know if I'm going to continue to read the book because it's just there's too much. I I know they're evil. Too I, much I, you don't want to know. I, exactly. I don't need to know the details of right. it. Okay. It's, it's, there's too many details about how evil the government is. Mm -hmm. But you know, the, the the biggest takeaway though that I've gotten in the past few years with. Trump is that almost every government conspiracy we've ever heard is true. And um, it's, it's pretty darn frightening. And, you know, when we were talking in the first segment about uh, Fox I'm News um, working with the Biden campaign, mm -hmm. which is just god awful. I mean, that's just awful. I mean, think about all the trust all of us at one point have put in the Fox News. I mean, come on. I know, you know, you, you may say you don't watch Fox News now, but you used to. And Conservatives were loyal watchers of Fox News for 20 years, some even more, okay? And we find out they probably uh, were doing this from the beginning. You know, I, I, got, uh, you know I, I, I am starting to think that now, that Fox News was always a front. They were always working with the Democrats. They never were what they – You think so? Said they, Roger Ailes – worked with Nixon in the White House. So Roger Ailes mm. goes way back to the political establishment of the Republican Party. I, I'm very suspect of, of everything now. Is it, I guess I just, I'm paranoid of everything and everyone now. Yeah, I, I, it, you're it, like Mel Gibson it, in, in that movie. Exactly. I'm yeah. going to start reading Catcher on the Rye every day. Okay, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like Mel Gibson <laughs> in that movie. Our daughter just read that book. She told me. You know, or she's starting to read it. She's reading the Great really? Gatsby. She's the Catcher in the Rye. The these, Catcher in the Rye is a so book a of filth. Of it's a it's a filth no, book. I read it in college. Do you know why Catcher in the Rye is a big deal? Because the main guy, um, uh, Hunter, is it Car Carfield? What's his name? Something yeah, Car Caulfield. 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 What's his first name? Is it Hunter? Like Hunter Biden? No. Hunter Caulfield. No. Something Caulfield. Uh, What's his name? And I don't remember. The I haven't read name. Catcher in the Rye in a long time. But in the beginning of the book, Mac, he, yeah, he's, sure. a, he's a young guy, and he has sex with an older woman who's a prostitute. That's why that book was so controversial. There was sex in it. And back when that book came out, not a lot of book, sex in books that people could go to the store and just buy, okay, um, uh, were, were controversial. Sure there's more to it than that. No, nah, it was just read a – it again. Nah, I don't need to read that book. But it again? Are you kidding me? I, I remember I read Catcher in the Rye. I'm like, this is it. This is it's 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 not it's, it's a thin smut book too. It's smut. That's why. It, and I not, read in not college, by today's standards. When I was in Italy, I had a roommate that was like, "You got to read this book." Oh my goodness! She had a copy of it. I read it. I'm you like, "Got to read the book." I, I was like, it must "Okay, have been crazy." Like I, I heard about it, but I I wasn't that impressed. No, I'm it's like, it's what is the big deal with this book because there's sex in it, and you couldn't just go. Well, when that book came out, you couldn't just go into a store and buy a book off the regular bookshelf of that had sex in it. Maybe you know that's why you know that's that's what I think. Anyway, um, that's that. But the media, the media, they're all co in, in in collusion. Yeah. This is um, MSNBC this morning. They're very concerned about uh, Trump. 
uh, executing people when he's in his second term. This oh is this, this new thing now. He's going to execute people. And I'm going to play this audio. And on the graphic, okay, this is the graphic on the screen. This is on MSNBC. Former Trump White House official, quote, Trump talked about executing people in multiple meetings, unquote. I don't believe that's that the graphic. It's on MSNBC that's today. That's insane. Yeah. So let These me. People have gone off the deep end. Let me play this. Irritable interpretation of what of what Bill Barr is saying here, right, is something like the president of the United States on a regular basis would blow off steam. I think that was his phrase, right? Yep, he would get mad right. and he would say things around the table like, let's imagine saying something like not. I would like I want to have this leaker found and executed. But let's imagine he's just blowing off steam. He's saying, you know, if we can find that leaker. I like to take him out of the back of the White House on the South Lawn and have him shot. And, and, and let's say he wasn't being serious. Let's just say he was, he was blowing off steam, right? As a matter of presidential temperament, is that yeah. the guy you want to have? Is that the guy? Okay, before we play As more. As opposed to Biden um, uh, openly saying that he wants to take people behind the gym and beat the shit out yeah, of them. Yeah, that's what he said. He, he, wanted to take, he wanted to take Trump behind the gym. Um, it, is, it is common in... American Standard English, I don't know what about in other countries, but in the United States, it is common for people when they're talking about somebody saying, I'm going to kill you. I'll kill them. They don't mean actually do it. OK, that's just how people talk. Yeah. But I don't believe that Trump said we're going to take him on the White House lawn and execute him. I, who's this White House official? Why don't they bring him on MSNBC? Because yeah. it's fake. Well, I just read in the Daily oh, I, I, Mail. I wanted to finish okay. it before we get to that. OK, okay they're, sorry. They're, you know, very upset presidential temperament is that yeah. the guy you want to have the guy. behind as the commander in chief sitting in the oval office a guy who when he's frustrated when he's blowing off steam again to use Barr's formulation is someone whose who's way in which he exercises his frustration is to casually talk about uh having people who work for him shot executed <laughs> in some way well i don't know if that's by uh, hanging or by uh, now in this whole discussion, Trump and MSNBC and this guy, the only person I know that's had anybody at their work die is Joe Scarborough, who's sitting here, who had that intern yeah, die in his campaign exactly. office years ago when he was in Congress. A guillotine or by uh, or by uh, the firing squad. <laughs> really I, I think it speaks fantasy. to a temperament that is the kind of temperament that leads you to a president of the United States who, when your vice president is on Capitol Hill. In the middle of a oh my good, you know now they're talking about guillotines and everything. Uh, yeah. And you know the thing about this, Kathy, is to them what they're saying makes sense. Yeah, and is it's 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 a you know when you're on television talking this way, you're at a certain level. You're at a certain level of respectability, right, and credibility. And they actually believe that this is legitimate political discourse. So what would you see in the Daily Mail? They they just had an article that because I, I texted my mom, but she hasn't answered me back. So she's busy. Why Biden is freezing? Because she wouldn't she would know she was a geriatric. Nurse. Oh, because of his. Um, so they just yeah. had an article. Um, doctors reveal what could be causing Biden's bizarre freezing. And they said Parkinson's. I've been telling you Parkinson's. Yeah. That I've that's been telling what you happens when you have Parkinson's. And, and, you know, I'll tell you why. So what about his problems I am, as, a, as a leader? That's not a problem? I'm not a doctor. I'm not diagnosing or anything. I have no medical expertise, okay? But I've been saying for the whole time Parkinson's because yeah. I've seen people over the years that have Parkinson's. And a, um, a lot of people that I've seen with Parkinson's mm -hmm. are – and this, by the way, goes for Michael J. Fox as well – are people that have led a life of vice and substance abuse. Yeah. And um, I don't – did Michael J. Fox, didn't he talk about having some issues when he was in Hollywood? And I've always thought – Yeah, he said genetics loaded the gun and behavior pulled the trigger. Yeah, and the thing with Michael J. Fox that I've never heard him comment on, but I've, I've suspected this for years – is when he made Back to the Future, if, if you ever hear him talk about it, he was on Family Ties then. He was filming Family Ties all day and then Back to the Future at night. Yeah. How do you, how do you pull that off, right? I exactly. So, and, and I've known other people and there's other celebrities that have had Parkinson's over the years that you know have all kinds of uh, substance abuse issues. 
And there's no way Biden is not the kind of guy, when you look at his kids, has not had some type of substance abuse problems throughout his entire life. Yeah. And, you know, they found that stuff at, outside well, the Trump situation room. Trump said that room. belonged to him. And Trump would know. And, um, I, and that's why I've thought Parkinson's because mm-hmm. – um, there's a connection, uh, uh, there's with, a connection that, yeah. with substance abuse and Parkinson's. Sure, I don't know if sense because it's a neuro- neurological disease. I don't know if there's like a medical connection. I'm just talking about my personal experience having seen people with Parkinson's. Many of them have had substance abuse issues in the past. And I, so I see a, a pattern there. It's anecdotal. It's not medical. But I've suspected that about Biden. Yeah. But, you know, here's the thing about Biden and, and the people around him. You know. Um, If if Biden and Jill were honest about the health conditions that he's gone through, I think a lot of people would respect that. Maybe not now because it's a little too late. But if they would not try to tell us Mm -hmm. that he's fine, these are cheap fakes, whatever the heck that is, he's not really out of it. Uh, Trump's just at the same level. You look at Trump, he can't put two sentences together. You, right. you know, they, they just cho- choose to lie, lie, lie. Tell us, don't believe our lying eyes, you know, over and over and over again. And I um, am frightened by it because it's dangerous. When, when you, you, the way he was on stage, if, unless he's faking it, you know, unless he's faking it to to try to psych Trump out for the debate. I don't think he's faking it, but <clears throat> I think Miranda Devine is correct not to underestimate him because she said whatever they do, whatever they give him, whatever he seems to be able to perform when it's absolutely necessary. But I I have seen I understand what she's saying, but I I think we've all seen such a huge decline in him. Yes. Um, over the last few months, oh, it's brutal. but I promise you CNN will do, or is going to work with him directly to make sure he comes out of this in their mind, looking rosy and on top <laughs> and making Trump look bad. And Jake Tapper, who hates Trump, uh, you know, cause he calls him fake Tapper, uh, is going to do whatever he can do and hit that mute button. It'll be interesting to see, because I don't think they've ever had a mute button it's liberals have fantasized about that forever, and they're finally going to get one. And I don't think they've ever had one at a debate before, mm-hmm. a mute button. So that'll be an interesting thing when Trump's sitting there talking and they keep hitting that mute button and, and you know, and, and they're going to have to hit it over and over and over again with him. I think part of Trump's strategy, I can imagine, would be to make Jake <laughs> Tapper hit that mute button like a hundred times. Oh, yeah. So people can count yeah. how many times he hits it. I'm serious. And that would be the big story. Like it's censorship. Like how many times I I'm going to count myself. I bet he's going to hit it a few hundred times during that debate, if not more. And I think Trump's strategy is to get him to hit that. It's only 90 minutes. Well, but can't you see Trump trying to get him? Somebody Don Jr. could say to him, you know what, dad, try to get him to hit that button as much as possible because then he'll look like a jerk. And he'll look like he's just trying to silence you. And I could see Trump doing well, that. Well, you know, the thing about the, like, nah, the nah, debates nah. of the mute button, because I uh, some people have said to me, well, when you're talking to callers on the radio, there's a mute button. Um, there is, and there, there's a reason why. On, on the radio, it's a technical thing. If there's more than one person, this is, this is specifically with the radio signal. Yeah, because signal. it's an audio. It, it, and this is just for radio, okay? The way that the radio signal works, if there's two things playing at the same time, it could be two people talking or two different songs. If there's two people talking at the same time, what comes out over the radio speaker is mud. You can't understand any right. of it. Television's different. Right. I agree. And the, there's no visual, so it's yeah, different. That, yeah, that's correct. Okay. Um, so you have to do that or nobody can hear anything. Right. The thing about the debates, though— this is a whole different thing. One is television. I don't believe there should be any moderators. I think that if you are at the level of president of the United States, you don't need a moderator. Right. You're the boss. And the two people at that level should be able to handle one another without any tricks, without any buttons, without any commentators, without any moderators, and and just have the two of them 
have a discussion and handle each other. Well, that's second. And yeah. and if one of them were to steamroll over the other and not let the other one talk, if you can't control the person you're debating against, well, how are you going to control Putin or Kim Jong Un, right? So I I think that's how they should do the debate. Now we're going to take our last break. When we get back, I'll get into this question I have about Ben Shapiro, and we got a whole bunch more too. All right, I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. Men, are you tired of looking tired? You can turn your tired eyes into a vibrant and refreshed look with a specially formulated under eye cream for men at Amazon.com slash shops slash Meditati. That's M-E-D-I-T-A-T-I. This anti-aging formula is designed to repair and protect your eyes against the common signs of aging. Dark circles, puffiness, and those pesky crow's feet gone. With Meditati, you'll say goodbye to those tired eyes and hello to a youthful appearance. It's packed with peptides, vitamins, C, jojoba oil, green tea, CoQ10, and other essential ingredients. This formula will keep your under eyes bright and refreshed. It also keeps your skin hydrated with the highest quality natural and organic ingredients. It's crafted by skincare experts, and this non-greasy, lightweight formula absorbs quickly and efficiently, nourishing the skin around your eyes. So if you're tired of puffiness and wrinkles, go right now to Amazon.com slash shops slash Meditati. That's M-E-D-I-T-A-T-I. Don't miss out on this chance to give your eyes the care they deserve because you and your eyes deserve it. Amazon.com slash shops slash Meditati. From authors A.W. Guerrera and Kelly C. Hogan comes Second Strike, Danger Close, the second book in their explosive trilogy, now available on Amazon. One year after a devastating terrorist attack on the United States, retired Delta Force member Luke Ellis and college freshman Annie Dedham are back. Together, they embark on a high-stakes, cross-country mission to prevent global war between the United States and China. With the help of a self-aware AI, Luke and Annie face off against China. Chinese special forces and a sinister AI, but the AI may be under the influence of an even darker force. As the clock ticks down, sacrifices must be made. Will Luke, Annie, and the AI be enough to stop impending war? Find out when you read Second Strike, Danger Close, from authors A.W. Guerrera and Kelly C. Hogan, available on Amazon, in Kindle, paperback, and hardcover. Don't miss out on this heart-pounding sequel. Order your copy right now. Think you know everything about American history? Guess again. Enter the shadows of America's past with America's Strangest History, a podcast where the forgotten stories of American history come to life. Host John Genoa is a historian and practicing attorney. His research uncovers the eerie and unusual aspects of American history that's not covered by mainstream historians. From untold mysteries to hidden history, each episode reveals spine-chilling secrets that are a part of America's actual history record. Did you know about the earliest recorded instance of vampirism in Vermont? That's just one glimpse of what you'll uncover on America's Strangest History. New episodes drop every week. America's Strangest History is available wherever you get your podcast. You can watch the video podcast on YouTube. Subscribe today, tune in, and share the podcast with all your friends on social media. America's Strangest History with host John Genoa on all podcast platforms and YouTube. Start listening right now. Take a thoughtful and meaningful journey with author Gregory Roller in the book, 40 Poems for 40 Years, available on Amazon. In this must-read book of poetry, author Gregory Roller shares words forged in the desert of rebellion, disillusionment, and despair, whether you're in the desert of desolation or the springs of renewal. These powerful words will encourage you to persevere through life's challenges and to rejoice in its victories, knowing that each day brings you closer to home. 40 Poems for 40 Years is available Available in Kindle, paperback, hardcover, and audiobook on Amazon. 40 Poems for 40 Years makes a great gift. It's also a perfect addition to your book club. Embrace the wisdom and resilience captured in this remarkable book. 40 Poems for 40 Years from author Gregory Roller on Amazon. Order your copy right now and let the journey inspire you. 
You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Okay, let me do this thing with Shapiro real quick, okay? Because it, it, it's, it's not much, but I want to hear your comments on it. And you can let me know in the um, description below your thoughts on it. And then um, there's some other, a few other things I want to get to before we end. Um, <clears throat> ben Shapiro is a strong defender and supporter of Israel. And I'm a supporter of Israel too, guys. Okay, you hear that, you know, I'm a very strong supporter of Israel. And I've talked a lot how I've been very confused and troubled that a lot of conservative commentators mm -hmm. are not so pro-Israel, which is very different in conservative circles, something we really haven't seen before. Conservatives have always been strong supporters of Israel. And I was watching an interview uh, with Patrick Bed David over the weekend. And he was talking about America first, America first. And he was making some comments about Ben Shapiro and his support of Israel. And he was talking about Candace Owens and some things. And I was really confused by this with Patrick Bet David. And I was thinking about it over the weekend. And then uh, today it popped in my mind what's, what's going on. Uh, and I want to share this with you. And let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with me on this. Um, some of the people that have not – now, again, I'm for America first, okay? It's always America first. But that doesn't mean that we don't have allies, and Israel's one of them. Canada's one of them. The UK is one of them, okay? Ukraine is not. Okay, that's a fake thing going on. Um, this is what I've come to think. Some of the people that have not been pro-Israel, in fact, have come out against supporting – Israel. And there's been like this equating it, like kind of like the Ukraine funny, Candace Owens and Mark Dice. Mark Dice shocked me. Candace Owens. And then I, I heard Patrick Bet David on this interview over the weekend that was from a few weeks ago. It wasn't a new interview that he did, but it was new to me. He did this a few weeks ago. I realized this. Mm. Ben Shapiro's doing damage to Israel. People that know Ben Shapiro don't like him. And, and I don't like Ben Shapiro. I don't know him personally, but people that know him and have interactions with him Candace Owens, Mark Dice, Patrick Bet David, and others, they don't like him because it's like Ron DeSantis. Yeah, he's not a nice guy. Right. He's very self important. He's annoying. Yeah. And, and, uh, the, no, no, very few people like Ben Shapiro. Well, I've never met him and I can't stand him. And what's happened with, I think what's going on here is people are trans, and, and you guys can let me know if you think this is at all possible. Displaced anger. People, yes. People are, yes. Taking their 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 rightful uh, hostility towards Ben Shapiro, and these are people that know him and have interactions with him, and putting it on Israel, and saying this is Israel, like he's and their representative. Exactly. And and what I and what I'm telling you is it's possible is is that what I've come to real because I've got res I've got res a lot of respect for Mark Dice. I like Mark Dice a lot, and I've never heard Mark Dice say anything. That I would take any uh, uh, any issue with, other than the Israel comments yeah. I've heard. Candace Owens has got a lot of problems, but I, when it comes to the issues, I agree with her ninety eight percent of the time. When it comes to like the issue, the rare time she talks about issues, so this thing caught me off guard. And then Patrick Beck David, who's kind of new to the scene of politics. I know Patrick Beck David's been around a while, but in the last year or two is when he's been, you know, with the with the valuetainment doing the politics. He's he's kind of new. But um, I agree. With, I, I don't think I've ever heard Patrick Bet David say anything I disagreed with until I was listening to him talk about Israel a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I was thinking, what's, what's going on here? Because I've been concerned about it because I support Israel and I don't like this trend. And then I realized the best thing Ben Shapiro could do to help Israel is to shut up and stop talking about Israel. Probably. And uh, I- Well, and, he's, he's never gonna do that. First of all, he can't shut he's up. He's hurting Israel because yeah. he's so, he is so disliked in if this Netanyahu country. Netanyahu called him personally and told him to do what you just said, he would not do it. First of all, he probably talks in his sleep. Yeah. He talks so much. Yes. He probably never stops talking. Yeah. Um, so he can't even stop talking. First of all, I mean, right. now, so guys, let me know in the comments what you think about that. What do you think, Kathy? Do you think there's something to what I'm? I think there's thinking? something to that. You said I think, displaced I think, anger. I think a lot of people 
like to have that issue with Trump. Like Bill Maher is a perfect example. My ben Shapiro derangement syndrome. He doesn't syndrome. like yeah. Trump because Trump sued him over something. And mm-hmm. sp- even though he, when you hear him talk, he agrees with almost all of his policies. <clears throat> but his anger towards Trump yeah. is what's really turning him off MAGA and turning him off conservatives yeah. overall. Is It's all it's like Joy Reid. She, <clears throat> she's even said she hates him. He represents everything she hates about white men. She's never even probably met the guy. There's a lot of that going on with people. I mean, that's a, a human phenomena where they they have anger, and it's called displaced anger, and they put it on something else when it's really about someone or or themselves or you know what I mean. They, that anger has to go somewhere, so they find something and they put it on that. And I think a lot of people put their inner demons, their inner anger, on Trump and like Scarborough. And them. I mean, it's just too personal. They just, they, they, their anger's just unhinged. Yeah. It's, it's just unhinged. Yeah. yeah. So I, I it's yeah. beyond the norm. So, so what I'm, I guess what I'm saying is, is there's a Ben, ben Shapiro derangement no, I syndrome. I well, you're right. The people that know him don't like him. For and good that's reason. that's his main topic. And it's turned them off. Of Israel. Of Israel or Jews or whatever. Yes. It's just turned them off. Yeah. Because in their mind, he's like represents all Jews. And he doesn't. No, not at all. He not doesn't. Even close. Yeah. So yeah. So the best thing Ben Shapiro could do to help Israel is to stop talking. And I agree Israel. with you, but yeah. that's not going to happen. <laughs> or just stop talking. Period. How about that? Do us all a favor. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. Now this uh, CNN they they did a segment. They had uh, polls on African American voters, which everyone, of course, was talking about over the weekend because President Trump went to Detroit, and uh, this is CNN. Listen. CNN senior data reporter Harry Etten is with us. So where does the race stand among African-American voters right now? Yeah, I keep looking for this to change, to go back to a historical norm. And it's simply put, has not yet. So this is the margin or Biden and Trump among black voters compared to where we were at this. By the way, the historical norm is for African-Americans to be Republican. African-Americans exactly. were Republican from the end of the Civil War until 1960. That's right. Okay, so that's 95 years. 95 years where African Americans were Republican. Well, what's going on? Now, so the historical, and, and they, they left and became Democrats for a while, but the historical norm which is was, where they're at which now. Which was totally staged, and those people were paid off, I promise you. What's happened is the Democratic Party is appropriating our history yes. into their own. Yeah. Um, real quick, though, well, I, when I, you're I didn't done, finish playing my this. mom texted me her theory on Biden, oh, well, so I'll give you the update on that. After the poll, yeah. we'll get to the update on Biden. Okay, so let's get back to the CNN segment. CNN senior data reporter Harry Etten is with us. So where does the race stand among African-American voters right now? Yeah, oh I gosh. keep looking for this to change, to go back to a historical <laughs> Keep praying. And simply put, has not yet. So this is the margin or... Biden and Trump among black voters compare where we were at this point in 2020 compare where we are now. You know, at this point, look at this. In 2020, Joe Biden was getting 86% of the African-American vote. Look at where it is now. It's 70%. That's a 16-point drop, John. And more than that, it's not just that Joe Biden is losing ground. It's that Donald Trump is gaining ground. You go from 7%, single digits at this point in 2020, to now 20 one percent. And again, John, I keep looking for signs that this is going to go back to normal, and I don't see it yet in the polling of anything back right now. Normal. We're careening towards a historic so they're abnormal. performance for Republican yeah. presidential candidate, the likes of which we have not seen in six decades. Yeah, but for almost a century before, it was that way. So exactly. this this trip to um, this trip to Detroit just really freaked all the media it out. Him out. And the speech at Turning Point was spectacular, and Steve Bannon was just on fire. But before that, when he went to the black church, the 180 church, this has really freaked them out, okay? And when he was at that round table in the front of the church, he was yes. sitting with mostly, there was the pastor who I'm sure is a big to-do up there, but everybody else were just regular people. And I was telling people this on the morning show today, these people that were on that round table with Trump in Detroit, they're African American, lifelong Detroit residents. I promise you they're Democrats, lifelong Democrats, and their parents and grandparents were Democrats. And they're up there supporting a Republican president at a black church. And there was and 
this these events in Detroit weren't pop up events. These were planned weeks and and in the case of Turning Point, months in advance. And there was no uh, anti Trump protest anywhere in Detroit. And uh, I know that because it would have been all over the news. Uh, he was welcomed to Detroit like a like a rescuing hero and savior. And uh, on the View this morning, of course, they had to correct that because they're very upset. So this is uh, Sonny Hostin and Whoopi on The View today talking about Trump at the Black Church. So one of the biggest crooks in the country. (laughs) Yeah, that's funny. And by that, 34 counts is what I'm talking about. Convicted felon, yeah. Convicted felon is telling black people that people are coming for their jobs. This is this is this is the narrative that is being pushed to black voters. And they keep saying, you know, oh, black people are going to him. Let's, can we look at the church? Can we get a, a oh, visual that, yes, of the please, church? Of the black church. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm not sure that most of these people even knew where that church was before they knew he was coming there. I wonder what she really talks like. That yeah, voice. Her, her her accent changes a lot. She's she's I don't get that, but I don't want to get into well, that. So what, you know what, what she's talking about with the church is there's white people in the black church. Um, I've been to uh, services at a black church. OK, sometimes there's special events and people that aren't members of the church exactly. go. But this church had uh, a presidential candidate and a president there. So a lot of people were there from the press. Right. Not everyone in Detroit is is black, Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, and, and a lot of people showed up that aren't members of the church because a president's there. And they wanted to, so to, what to see that. So she's saying white people can't go to a black church? And that they don't belong there. Yes, that's right. Don and they don't Lemon belong there. That. That's where that came from. And they don't belong there is night. what she's saying. It's pretty bad. Okay, so, yeah. so your, your mom, who's she a nurse, said, she, get, she okay. gave us some medical uh, observations yes. of Biden. My mom is a retired nurse, and she— Worked primarily with elderly people. For over 50 years. 60 years. 60 years. Oh, my goodness. Longer than um, I She said that is a sign of somebody who's had multiple strokes. Oh, really? Yes. Biden, multiple strokes? Yes. Multiple strokes has caused brain damage, and that's usually— Multiple strokes. That's just what you want the with the nuclear football. The synapses, the, the neurons are not connecting. Mm. There's like clots have damaged the nerves, and things are not firing— um, she said Parkinson's is possible, but she said in her opinion that that is somebody who's had multiple strokes, that that is the, they try to pass it, it off both. that it's side effects of, of what of drugs that he's on. Oh he's yeah. On blood, blood thinners don't cause you to do that. No, I've been on blood thinners. That's not a side effect. Um, he has, uh, he has acid reflux. I, <laughs> most of us have that's that. That doesn't, ca- that doesn't cause you to freeze if up. That's and all he had. Blank out. But that's her her medical diagnoses. Um, well, it's not a diagnosis because she's not, not a, a diagnosis. Her opinion, I'll her, say, her, yes. just from her experience, I'll say working that. with people in working Florida with elderly people that have dementia. That's yes, that, and she has worked with many hundreds, and uh, that's her opinion on that. So I, you know, that makes sense well, to she, me. you know, she's nursed for sixty years, and she does know a lot about these things. And, and she and, worked with mostly old people. Yeah, because she was a nurse in Florida. Yeah. And, it, and we, you know, we talk to her about medical things all the time, and she's, she's pretty spot on. Yeah. Yeah, she knows her stuff because she's had so much experience. But, you know, the least of our problems, Kathy, should be the acid reflux. If that's all he had was acid <laughs> reflux. <laughs> we all have that. I have that. It's awful. You know, an argument could be made, though, that if Biden – had his wits about him, things would be worse because the he would be going full steam corruption more so than he's doing now. He's a little bit limited because he's so checked out. Does that make sense? Well, I you know I think he's just so out of it. I mean, I he I don't think he knows what's going on. I think Obama is running the show, mm-hmm. and I've said that all along that he oh, yeah. he's running the government. Um, and maybe that was the deal they made all along. Yeah, maybe. you know. That, 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 you know. Well, listen, we are out of time for today. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Thanks for listening, and we will talk to you next time.